Hello and welcome to another episode of Siebel CRM Update Highlights, brought to you by the Siebel Hub, the number one resource for high quality and always up-to-date Siebel CRM training and knowledge. The September 22nd release, Siebel CRM 22.9, packs the following new features and enhancements. Outbound REST enthusiasts will rejoice at the support for Open API 3.0, import from URL and filter services, along with a revised REST guide in Siebel Bookshelf. The optional repository upgrade includes, among many other objects, a new business service to support the product administration REST API and code updates to several dozen web templates for better accessibility. Other noteworthy changes include the always welcome Tomcat update, this time to 9.0.65, enhancements in the test automation area, and a refurbished HTML report for the post-install database setup utility. Let's take a look at the enhancements for the outbound REST framework. With Siebel CRM 22.9 and higher, developers can not only import Open API 2.0, but also Open API 3.0 specifications for external services. Many of the Open API 3.0 features, such as cyclic definitions, arrays, or enumerations, are supported. The web service wizard in Siebel Web Tools now supports direct import of external web service definitions from a URL as well as the traditional import from a local file. Note that URL import is only available in Web Tools and requires imports of the external services root certification authority certificate into the trust store of the internal application container. The introduction of filter services for outbound REST gives developers the ability to intercept the outgoing request and incoming response to inspect or even modify the property sets as they fly by. This might prove quite valuable if, for example, the external service requires a stronger authentication than basic authentication. Make sure to check out the REST guide in Bookshelf 22.9 and later. The chapter on outbound REST has been revised and Web Tools is now the go-to standard for importing external specifications to generate proxy business services and adjacent integration objects. Here's a closer look at the updated form applet for the first step of the Web Tools web service wizard. Note the new options for importing from file or URL. As mentioned, certificates must be in the right place for this to work properly. A new list applet Filters has been added to the Outbound REST Services view. After importing the external specification, this applet allows the definition of two business service methods, one for request, the other for response. At runtime, the request filter method will be invoked before the request is actually sent. The property set representing the request data can be inspected and modified. For example, developers can add HTTP headers to support more advanced authentication mechanisms than basic authentication. When the response is returned from the external service, the response filter method can be used to inspect or modify the result property set before it's processed by the proxy. From an architectural perspective, filter services stand between the proxy business service and the Java business service that handles the property set to JSON conversion and reverse. It's worth mentioning that the filter service methods will act upon the property set representation of the outgoing request or incoming response. Any conversion to and from JSON happens on the internal application container. Filter services are optional and most probably they'll require a custom implementation in eScript and or a combination with standard business services and workflow processes. Siebel CRM 22.9 puts quite some emphasis on the REST framework. The product administration REST API grows stronger with a new business service by the name of SWI CFG Object Broker. This new service is included in the optional repository upgrade and allows retrieval of the complete set of versioned products, including information about its classes and attributes. The REST bookshelf guide and the auxiliary zip archives, open API specifications, and sample postman collection have been updated accordingly. If you execute the optional repository upgrade, for instance, to secure the aforementioned SWICFG object broker business service, you'll notice that the resulting integration workspace contains a lot of updated web template definitions. In an effort to improve the experience for users relying on assistive technologies, such as screen readers, Oracle has added the role equals presentation attribute 
to many web templates, including popular standard templates such as View Detail. If your customizations affect any of these standard web templates, and if you are planning to run the repository upgrade in 22.9 or in any future update, it might be prudent to plan some extra time to ensure that template code customizations do not get overridden by the new standard. Administrators tasked with running and monitoring the update process will be pleased to find that the HTML report that is generated by the post-install database update utility has been improved. The individual sections now include the number of items, allowing the reader to get a good overview of the affected areas. The same improvements are also available for the HTML report produced by the repository upgrade utility. Speaking of post-install database update and repository upgrade, it is time to take a look at the process that ensures your Siebel CRM project stays on track with Oracle's continuous updates. Let us review the mandatory and optional steps for a successful update to the latest Siebel release. First, it is highly recommended to make a backup of the entire environment and the database that you are intending to update. Then the modular deployment engine MDE, needs to be run. It will lay down the new files to disk. If your Siebel version is 21.1 or older, you will also get a topology update to the MDE's unified directory structure. This applies to any enterprise server component such as AI, Siebel Server or Gateway. It is also mandatory to run the post-install database update, which can be run automatically as part of the MDE or manually after the MDE is finished copying the binaries. This has to be executed once per database and applies schema changes and import seed data and open UI manifest data into the target database. Make sure to check the post-install DB update HTML report and the log files and rerun in case of errors before you continue. There are also optional steps which might or might not be applicable to your situation. The repository upgrade utility is optional. It can be run only against a development database. It should be run only if you intend to uptake the so-called non-mandatory changes made by Oracle. The repository upgrade utility will import schema changes, import seed data, and open UI manifest data as well as create a developer workspace under an integration workspace named int underscore Siebel underscore update. In this developer workspace, the repository upgrade utility imports the repository artifacts. Developers can then inspect and test the Oracle manufactured objects and subsequently deliver them into your main branch or your any integration branch. The release notes contain configuration instructions which you might have to apply in your development environment if necessary. There are known issues reported in the release notes as well, so make sure you understand and apply the workarounds if necessary. And finally, there's a bunch of non-repository administrative changes which you might have to take care of. The complete update process with all required and optional steps in green and gray respectively is depicted on the diagram. Here we can see the update process for development environments where the fast track to a successful update is as follows. Take a backup, run the MDE, run the post-install database update. If you have no repository upgrades, configuration instructions or administrative changes to implement, you are done. If you need to execute the non-mandatory repository upgrade or apply configuration instructions, you have to do that in the development environment and test and deliver these changes. If you have any administrative changes on your to-do list, you have to implement them as well before declaring success. The same is true for test or production, also known as RR environments, where the update process is a little shorter. The mandatory steps are the same. Back up your environment, run MDE, run post-install database update. There's nothing else to do, you're done. Of course, you have to repeat the update process for every Siebel instance. If the DR update included repository changes, you have to use the migration application to deploy the new and updated artifacts from the development environment to the runtime environment. Similar to the DR environment, you might have some administrative changes on your checklist that you need to execute before declaring the update complete. 
What if your Siebel CRM version is Innovation Pack 16 or older? Let's take a look at the path for an upgrade from a version prior to Innovation Pack 17 to the latest and greatest release. If your current Siebel CRM version is below IP17, you find yourself in the lower portion of the diagram. This means that you have to conduct an upgrade project to get to the latest Siebel release. The duration of a Siebel CRM upgrade project is measured in person months, sometimes person years. The project complexity and duration are tightly coupled to the number of customizations you have applied over the years and also to the age of your Siebel application. In a nutshell, the more time and money was spent on customizing Siebel, the more time and money will have to be spent on the upgrade. If you come from a very old Siebel release, such as Siebel 7.5, you have to execute a two-step upgrade. One-step upgrades are supported from 7.8 up to 8.2. Upgrades from these ancient releases also require a migration from the ActiveX-driven High Interactivity Client to Siebel OpenUI. If you are on a younger version, such as Innovation Pack 13-16, you're on the Incremental Repository Merge IRM, track, which is still a lengthy process but much more streamlined. You might not even have to migrate to OpenUI as you're already using it. Upgrade projects are conducted using an installation of latest Siebel CRM release available at the time you start the project. If you already ran a successful Siebel upgrade to IP17 or higher, you no longer have to run a lengthy, costly upgrade project. To get from a post-IP17 release to the latest available update, you only have to execute the aforementioned update process. The real benefit of Oracle's continuous release model is evident here, as the update process will at most take a few person days. Are you planning to update or upgrade to the latest Siebel release and are in need of more information on what changes you have to expect? Look no further. You are watching a monthly update summary provided by the Siebel Hub and Black Sheep IT Consulting, which is part of a playlist that provides you with detailed summaries of all continuous release updates going back to 18.7. Check the video description for a link to the playlist. If you or your team require up-to-date training for Siebel 22, be it a What's New workshop for experienced staff or foundational training for onboarding Siebel CRM developers or administrators, the Siebel Hub Learning Experience got you covered. You find a link to the Siebel Hub training page in the description. Thanks for watching. See you next time.